uh, we're still on uh, this month of our theme is evangelism and um, and uh, so in that same uh, theme I'd like to share something very simple um, just uh, I'm calling it the foundation of evangelism the basics uh, of evangelism um, and um, and so I will just share some points from the scriptures and we as Christians, uh, it is our calling, it is our, basically our duty, a command by Jesus that we should be witnesses, we should be uh, evangelists, uh, evangelists, someone who uh, spreads the gospel of Jesus, someone who tells others who Jesus is. So uh, we, um, I will sh I'll share on that, and uh, just to, uh, to begin with, I'll share a story uh, of this guy, uh, Bill, who was uh, part of a church, and he used to um, come to church, but uh, this time around he was there after, so, after a few years, uh, all dressed up nicely, um, and uh, he was there in church. And, uh, and the story is that uh, he had left church for a while. A few years he was uh, not attending church, and a few people tried to get him to come, but he were, wasn't uh, keen on coming. The thing was, he, he used to come some time back, and uh, it wasn't uh, the worship or the preaching or music or things like that that uh, discouraged him. But he felt that nobody liked him or nobody wanted him there. Uh, he felt lonely when he came to church. He was He thought that, um, you know, nobody wanted him there. He, he would do things on his own and no one would come and talk to him. And so he had this lonely feeling and eventually he stopped coming to church. And, um, but after so long, he's back in church and he's dressed up neatly. The only thing is that he's laying in a coffin. Uh, he's passed away and he's here nicely dressed in a coffin. And uh, thinking about this uh, incident, this story, how many times have we, uh, if we consider ourselves, or how many of you know similar people who've been away and then you suddenly you, you hear them passing on and you, the next time you see them is at their funeral. And um, this, bearing that in mind and thinking about this incident, it should uh, um, uh, cause you to really think and uh, see where you stand. How in your life, your day-to-day -day life, are you uh, making an impact in other people's lives? Are you touching them? Uh, what are they feeling when they come to church? And uh, our job as Christians is to continually uh, reach out to touch people's lives to encourage them. That is what we are called to do, to share God's love. Amen? Amen, are you with me <laughs> so far? Being a Christian, Christian means we are called to evangelize. The good news that we are to spread, to share with others. But the, the truth is that mainly, mostly Christians don't take this uh, duty or this job or this calling very seriously or this command to make disciples very seriously. Someone said that uh, uh, in Christianity there's less fisher, fishes of men but more to look after the aquarium. Yeah? No, less fishes of men but a lot of people to look after the aquarium. But Jesus says, he wants us to be fishes of men. He wants us to be bringing all the fish, all the people in, rather than looking after them uh, in one place and no one is out there fishing for them or speaking to them and reaching out to them. That is why uh, our church, our, one of our main mission is to evangelize and we want to focus on that and this month we've set aside for that. We as Christians need to be active and passionate about sharing the good news. The news, the good news that can change or has changed our lives can change other people's lives and their future. The first thing we should do is maybe 
uh, clear our minds. You know, evangelism or evangelist, when we think about it, we um, uh, think a lot of things. If I ask you what it is or what it means to evangelize or be an evangelist, and uh, you might have a bit of confusion or have different ideas. Some might think that, oh no, you have to have big crusades, or evangelistic meetings and speak, and you have a uh, evangelist preaching, uh, something like that. You, some might think that, oh, we have to go along the streets and, uh, you know, uh, meet people and tell them that, um, oh, you are a sinner and you, you are going to hell and things like that. Some may think that you have to go house to house, knock on the doors and try and share uh, about Jesus. But what I want us to uh, know, I want to share, I'll bring to you, is that uh, evangelism is, it starts from us. It's our, our attitude, our... Um, our day-to-day -day living amongst the people in this world, in your communities, in your own family, uh, at your work, at school, and uh, people you meet, how are you relating to them? Are you, uh, through your lives, are you sharing the good news, the gospel of Jesus? So I'll just share three uh, verses, and we'll go through it together. Uh, we'll start off with Isaiah chapter 43, verse 12. The first point I want to uh, highlight to you, bring to you, is from Isaiah chapter 43, verse 12. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 12, and it says, I have declared and saved, I have proclaimed, and there was no foreign God among you. Therefore, you are my witnesses, says the Lord that I am God. You are my witnesses that I am God. This is what the Lord is saying to us. You are my witnesses. Each one of us, through our lives, we should reveal or reflect who God is, how good He is to us, what He has done for us. People see our lives, they should see God because we are created in His image. And what are we reflecting? Jesus said that you are the light of this world. And uh, are we shining that light that Jesus expects, expects us to do? If I ask you to turn around and tell someone how good God is and what he's done for you, what would, for, what's the first thing that will come to your mind? When we share uh, about Christ to someone, we are connecting and telling them how good God is to you. We are acknowledging that God has done good things for you, firstly, and you are able to connect that person to God and he's able to relate. And, and also the verse says that, um, that as we acknowledge God, you know, acknowledge him in all your ways, in all things you do, all the good things that you acknowledge God, you tell, you tell people that, it's through God's blessing. It's through God. And Bible says that He will direct our paths. The blessing and the promise is there. So as we acknowledge God in everything that we have, uh, we are, we, um, you know, everything that is about us, when we acknowledge God, when we connect people and say, look, this is of God, this is from God, this is a blessing, we are actually acknowledging God. And through that, God is blessing us and reaching out to them as well. We are helping others to see who God is and how great He is and what He can do for them and uh, what He's done for us. So being witnesses, as the Lord said, you are my witness. We are His witnesses. And witness is uh, someone who has seen firsthand or experienced something. And if you have experienced it or you have seen it for yourself, then you are able to share it. You are able to tell someone else what you've seen or what you've experienced. That is what a witness is. And then the same chapter, uh, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10. Uh, it says, You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be any after me. Amen. You are my witnesses. So as we be witnesses, as we share our faith, 
As we share what God has done for you, how, God, how good God is, Bible says that we not only help them, but we are also uh, strengthening our faith, uh, building our faith, our relationship with God goes stronger. As we reveal God through our lives, through what we do, our actions, our, um, uh, our words, how we speak, what we do, where we go, things like that. We are being God's witnesses. And when people see us, they'll see something different. They'll see, oh, what does he have that I, I don't have? And God's only plan to, to spread the gospel, spread his good news, is through us. We are to go out and uh, reach out to those who are lost. Everyday Christians, ordinary people, being witnesses and sharing God's love. The, so the other point I want to share from Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. This is a, a very common verse, and we've been using it. It's part of our, our, our church's vision and mission statement. And this is the core of what we believe, our Christian, uh, Christian life, what we are. And Jesus gave this command to his disciples from verse 19, sorry, uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. It says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things um, that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So, the command is to go and make disciples. And uh, maybe you, you or some people would have the idea that the main uh, thing in this verse or the most important thing in this verse is to go. But I believe that it's not go, it's to make disciples. That is our core responsibility. Go and make disciples. And, and disciples, making a disciple is, uh, it's, a, it's a process. It's not just you went and told someone about Jesus and you've made a disciple, no. For someone to be a disciple means he has left his old uh, life, he's accepted Jesus, he's uh, repented of his sin, he's asked Jesus to come in his life, and he's following Jesus now. That is the disciple. It's a complete process. So when we share about Jesus to someone, we not only just say, oh, Jesus loves you, and go away, but we set an example, we keep praying for them, we keep talking to them, uh, we keep sharing to them, um, and uh, eventually when that person accepts Jesus Christ, you have made one disciple. Amen? So it's a process, and it's not easy, and we have a lot of work to do. So the important thing is Jesus is asking us to make disciples. And this we can do almost every day, uh, in, in this process where we go to work every day. How... Uh, what do we do there, our words, our action, how do we, how, um, do, we do our work, how do we perform there, uh, maybe in your home, in your family, in your neighborhood, what do people think of you? Uh, as you do your daily chores, uh, go places, shopping or things like that, what do people see? You are a disciple, you are making disciples everywhere you go, uh, either a bad disciple or a good disciple. But Jesus is asking us to make his disciples, which means following Jesus. And through our lives, the way uh, we do things, do we reflect something that people will say, look, I want to follow this guy. I want to, uh, uh, I want to have what this person has. Uh, I want to have this uh, joy that is coming out of this person. What, what, what am I missing? That's how you draw people to you, when you reach out to them. Someone said that it is a 24-hour job, seven days a week. When we focus, when we have the responsibility to make disciples, to connect people to Jesus. You're like a receptionist, right? You want to call, make a call somewhere, you call the receptionist, the receptionist dials wherever you want and then puts it to your extension. That is connecting. So we are basically receptionists. 
we want to make that connection. We want to get that connection for that person to be able to talk to Jesus and have a relationship there. So that is our duty. That is our responsibility. Everything else aside, that is our main responsibility. And if you think about it, this, if, if God was to uh, come and ask you or judge you about your life, what have you achieved in your life? What do you think he'll ask you first? What is the main question that he'll ask? Do you think he'll ask you how much money you made? Uh, because nowadays everything is about money. Everything you do, it's about money because you want to eat, you want to have a house. So it's all about money. You have to work to make money. You have to do your business to make money. And then, uh, you know, eat. Basically, make money, eat. Make money, eat. Huh? And do things with it. So do you think God will ask you how much money you made or how much you enjoyed your life? Um, uh, whether you, you know, maintained yourself, stayed healthy, um, or, you know, you achieved, you know, things, maybe education, qualifications, and uh, uh, fame, and things like that. Would he ask you then? Or how many, you know, have you made so many friends, or how many friends have you made? Like in Facebook, you have thousands of friends, and half of it you don't know who they are. Do you think Jesus will ask you how many friends you have in your Facebook? I believe that his first question will be to us is how many disciples have you made? How many people have you brought to me? How many people have you uh, shared your faith or made them to leave their past, their old lifestyle and turn to Jesus? I believe that would have what his question would be to us. And if you think about it, how many have we done? He'll ask, the places I put you, wherever you're staying, wherever you are working, where, whichever family I put you in, were you able to make any disciples? That is the question he'll ask you. Which means our words, the things we do, our actions, should match our, what we call ourselves, Christian. It should match the word of God. It means that we'll have to be humble enough to, if we make mistakes, if we fall, to be able to ask for forgiveness. If we hurt someone, we should be humble enough to ask for forgiveness. And also, if people have hurt us, if people have done something against us, we should, have be, we should be able to forgive, just as Jesus forgave. This is being Christ-like. Not, you know, having grudges and having arguments and you have people who don't like you here, you don't like these people, then you can't be a disciple. You can't be making disciples if you have things like that going on. When we focus on making disciples, when it becomes uh, the priority in our hearts, or in our minds, or in our hearts, wherever we go, we want to uh, uh, share or reflect who God is, then what you are doing is you're putting God first. You're, you are um, um, elevating him. You're lifting him high. Uh, just like, you know, those flag bearers or, you know, in the Commonwealth Games or things like that. You have this guy holding the flag and it's really high because they want to show where, which country you're from. So if you are make, trying to uh, go about your daily lives, making sure that when people see you, when people talk to you, when people meet you, they will find something different than you are lifting God up, making him higher. So they don't see you, but they see God. Amen? That is, our, that is what God expects us as Christians, bringing good news to those we come in contact with. The third point I want to highlight or show to you is from uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Um, but First uh, Peter chapter three verse fifteen. But sanctify, sanctify the Lord God in your heart, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you, 
with meekness and fear. You'll be ready to defend the hope that is in you. This is an important verse for Christians. When you're going through difficult times, this world we know has, will always give us trouble. But that hope that we have, a lot of Christians, they go around as if they don't have any hope. How are you, brother? How are you, sister? Oh, I'm very sick. You know, this is happening, that is happening. But this is not what God wants. He has given us new life. He has given us hope. He, we have a destiny, like we sang this song. But we as Christians walk around like we don't have a destiny. And how can you share, how can your life reflect God when you have your head down and walking around? We are sons of God. We are the prince and princess of the most holy kingdom. Amen? Amen. So you have a hope, a hope, eternal hope, that comes from God, is a gift to us, where there's no more pain, no more sorrows. And when people ask us, hey, what's, what, why do you keep smiling even though at home, you're, I know you're having problems, your kids are messing up, I know you don't have a job, you are struggling with finance, but you are always happy. You sleep at night like nothing is uh, you know, going wrong. And uh, you are always helping people. You are always encouraging people. What is it? Say, I have the hope. And Bible says, be ready to defend the hope in you. If you don't have that hope, if you have forgotten who you are, I want to remind you, you are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. You have a hope. You have eternal destiny. And you lift your head up. And when you go around, people will say something different. What do you have? I need it. And that is how you share God's word. Defend your hope, the faith that you have in you. And doing that, you build yourself up. Your faith increases. You are encouraged. And you are connecting those people to God. Everyone has problems. Everyone is burdened. Everyone goes through sickness and things. But we have a hope. We have eternal, a father who loves us, who says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But we as Christians, we forget all this. We keep looking at our, our sorrows, our burdens, the things that pull us down. And, and when we keep uh, giving priority on that, that keeps more bringing us down. And then we, keep, uh, we lose sight of who is standing next to us. Just like Peter, he started sinking because he, his eyes went on the waves. But Jesus picked him up. We should be encouragers. We should be sharing to people who God is, what He's done in your life, and what He has promised you. And when we, our lives, when you have hope in you, when you have the joy of the Lord, it'll show in your face. And I guarantee you, people will always want to know what you have. This is why we encourage you to be part of prayer meetings, Bible studies, and the cell group meetings, life group meetings. Because this is where you are able to uh, relate and share and, uh, and uh, meet people and, and share the hope that you have and the, the faith that you have and the good things that God has done for you. And so you're not isolated. You're not just oh, coming to Sunday service and then going away. But you are uh, in there, in the mix of it, through your lives. And you don't have to say a lot of things. You don't have to learn how to uh, speak you know, uh, or preach or things like that. It's your life, how you go about yourself, that people will notice. This is someone who asked uh, uh, an artist who painted pictures and asked him uh, to paint a picture of evangelism. So they said, this word evangelism, what it means to you, can you paint it for me? And so this artist, what he did was he painted uh, dark clouds, and he painted uh, lightning, you know, lightnings um, on the painting, and dark clouds, and rain, and uh, this ocean with big waves, you know, angry waves, uh, tossing and turning, and then there's this little boat there, and uh, the boat was uh, broke, breaking up, and uh, the crew and the people from that boat were in the water, 
And so he's painting all this. And uh, they were all struggling to survive. But then uh, on this, uh, towards the front on the side, uh, he painted uh, a, a big rock. And there was this one of the sailor, he was hanging onto the rock. And, and with one hand, and with the other hand, he was trying to reach out and grab some, another sailor who was in the water. And so if you picture that, this man clinging onto the rock and trying to grab and pull someone from the water, that is New Testament evangelism. That is our role. We have been saved, we are holding on to the rock of ages, and our other hand should be reaching out and pulling those who are in trouble, those who are sinking. That is what it means to evangelize. And our lives, everything we do, everything we say, it should be focused on trying to make a disciple of Jesus. Focused on saving someone. Focused on telling someone that Jesus loves you and he has a future for you. But until we, if you are holding on to the rock and being selfish, then others are dying and they are drowning. But Jesus is expecting us to reach out. If we don't reach out, who will take the gospel to the world, to our family, even our own family? We don't have to go far. Our own family uh, don't know Christ, uh, uh, drowning in, in sin, in darkness. Who will reach out to them? It is our job. We are to offer that hope that only comes from Jesus himself. And the most important message that we can share to them comes from John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, whoever, doesn't matter who, the worst of the worstest, worst sinner, we might think that he is a, a burden to this world or to this earth, dharti ke bhoja. You know, the worst kind of person, but you know what? Jesus still loves him and he wants to save him. But if that person doesn't know that Jesus loves him, then he is a waste. He'll go to hell. And verse 17 says, For God did not send his son to this world to condemn the world, but that through him the world will be saved, may be saved. So our responsibility is telling them that Jesus did not come to condemn you because you are doing this or that, but Jesus loves you. He wants to save you. He saved me. I'm holding on to the rock and I want to grab you and pull you out of that. That is making disciples. That is evangelizing. And that is our calling. Let us all stand. As we think about this picture, let's all stand. Of this man holding on to that rock and reaching out to pull this other person. Let's close our eyes as we think about this. Our calling to evangelize.